19 former heads and deputy chiefs of the Finance Department and the National Economic and Development Authority support President Rodrigo Duterte's tax reform plan. In a statement Monday, 12 former DOF and NEDA secretaries and 7 finance undersecretaries say Duterte's comprehensive tax reform program will, quote, correct the structural weaknesses of the country's tax system. The manifesto is signed by former DOF Secretary Cesar Virata, Jose Isidro Camacho, Jesus Estanislao, Roberto de Ocampo, Jose Pardo, Cesar Purisima, and Juanita Amato, and former NEDA Directors General Arsenio Balisacan, Emanuel Esguera, Shalito Habito, Felipe Medalia, and Romulo Neri. The House Makabayan Bloc earlier criticized the first package of tax reform submitted to the 17th Congress as anti-poor. The tax reform package proposes reduction in income tax rates, removal of VAT exemptions, higher fuel excise taxes, and a levy on sweetened products. Under the first package, the maximum rate of personal income tax will be reduced over time to 25% from the current 32% except for the highest income earners. The Finance Department estimates the overall loss of government revenue due to the proposed tax reforms will reach 173.8 billion pesos, but said it will be offset by potential gains from revenue-enhancing reform. Hundreds of thousands of Black Nazarene devotees on early Monday joined the yearly procession in Manila, one of the Philippines' biggest religious festivals. The Black Nazarene Procession, or Traslacion, leaves the Carino Grand Stand at 5.28 a.m. The police estimates the initial crowd to be at close to half a million. It's expected to swell in the next 24 hours as the procession makes its way to the Quiapo Church. The Black Nazarene Procession, held annually on January 9, attracts devotees from all walks of life. The image of the suffering Christ is believed to be miraculous. The devotees attend despite a terror threat announced by the government. Close to 3,000 cops and more than 400 soldiers have been deployed to the area. The procession comes as the Catholic Church faces an unprecedented challenge posed by the killing of more than 6,200 Filipinos in the Duterte administration's war on drugs. President Rodrigo Duterte on Monday confirms a new batch of new government appointees including controversial singer and blogger Moka Uson as member of the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board. Uson's term as MTRCB board member will expire on September 30, 2017. Communication Secretary Martin Andanar earlier cited her influence as a blogger and experience as an artist as her qualifications to be MTRCB board member. Uson's blog is known for its fierce support for Duterte even after the elections. She's controversial for her attacks on journalists who report on and criticize Duterte, calling them prostitutes or corrupt journalists. The leak of online messages of Vice President Lenny Robredo's supporters allegedly planning propaganda campaigns against President Rodrigo Duterte won't be discussed during the cabinet meeting Monday. Communication Secretary Martin Andenar had said he intended to bring it up in the cabinet meeting after he received a copy of the supposed leaked messages from two bloggers, one of them anonymous. But National Security Advisor Hermogenes Esperon Jr. dismisses the issue. Esperon says, quote, It happens that it will not be one of the matters that will be taken up. That just tells you that we have other more important matters to discuss. But he says the plot is important because, quote, we have to know the veracity of some things as they affect, of course, our stability if they are capable. Andanar on Sunday said he believes the so-called Lenny leaks can lead to destabilization. The Lenny leaks refer to Yaha Group's discussions by the group Global Filipino Diaspora Council on how to defend Robredo from Duterte and Bongbong Marcos supporters. Robredo defeated Marcos in the last elections. Pro-Duterte bloggers concluded, based on the email thread, that Robredo is plotting to oust Duterte. Award-winning actress Meryl Streep slams United States President-elect Donald Trump for his divisive rhetoric as she receives a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Golden Globes. You and all of us in this room really belong to the most vilified segments 
in American society right now. Think about it. Hollywood, foreigners, and the press. Streep speaks out with Trump's inauguration two weeks away. The Republican candidate ran a divisive presidential campaign, vilifying Mexicans and calling for a ban on Muslim immigration. So Hollywood is crawling with outsiders and foreigners. And if we kick them all out, you'll have nothing to watch but football and mixed martial arts, which are not the arts. Streep's award marks a career which has seen her win eight Golden Globes and collect 29 nominations. She also hit Trump for the infamous campaign speech, where he did a mocking impression of disabled reporter Serge Kowaleski. And this instinct to humiliate when it's modeled by someone in the public platform, by someone powerful, it filters down into everybody's life because it kind of gives permission for other people to do the same thing. Mm -hmm.